Hip-hop since 1987.com. Now, you talk about us empowering the youth, which we have to do, and us understanding what we need to invest in as a people. We've invested in the bling bling, we've been poisoned with that. I watched you in a prior interview speak about the, um, the dollar becoming weak and inflation coming. What do we invest in? What commodities do we need to put at the forefront of our community and not just you know, the Jay-Z's, whether it be the next level down, the, the low level businessman, to the guy who wants to be a businessman. What do we need to be focused on? What do, what commodities do we need to acquire? Whatever commodity the Jay-Z's and the Kanye's of the world focus on in their creative genius in terms of design of clothes that Puffy did, that Carl Kanai did, that others did, that comes from some form of a product that comes from the earth. What you have on, what I have on, this is linen. The root is cotton. We grew the cotton for white folk. The cotton will grow for us. We took the hide off the cattle and the goat and made shoes for the white folk. We designed designer shoes for the big companies in Italy and Spain. See, the pocketbooks that we have, all of it made from something that comes from the earth. But when you ask the brother, how much earth do you own? Well, if you don't own the earth, you don't own the root of the product that you make. China will say to you, come, bring it here. I can do it cheaper, which they can because they own the earth that it's coming from. So they can make shirts for me. If I want to be a shirt man, then I just take them my design. They make it, send it back to me. They make a, a profit and I make a profit, but I got to make it higher because I'm not the main man. I don't own the root. So Elijah Muhammad said, we got to go to the root. And the root is land. How much land do we own? Land, earth. Well, we were set free, so-called, in 1865. By 1910, the black people who were just set free own 16 million acres of land in America. Then we built towns on the land that we own. We cut down the trees. We made homes. We were the people that built America for white people. But when freedom came, they didn't want us to be the only artisans, craftsmen, engineers. Go look at some of the slave accounts. We got a nigger architect. We got a nigger engineer. We got a nigger cook if for sale. We were the people that built the White House and the, and the uh, Capitol. We were on loan to the government from our plantations. So when you see the talent that we had when slavery was ended, we were the craftsmen, we were the builders, we had a natural job. Then they said, no, we can't let the niggas have that. So a man named Samuel Gompers, a Jewish man, started the unions and they started bringing with the homestead act they brought all these whites from eastern europe who were craftsmen and whatnot they saw the the revolution in haiti and the the french people in louisiana got shook up because the blacks they figured might start 
rising up here. So they sold the Louisiana Purchase to America for $15 million. So here was all this land, but nobody to live on it. So America brought in all these Europeans, gave them millions of acres of land. And when we were supposedly set free, they offered us 40 acres and a mule. And they never gave us the mule or the 40 acres. That's why Dr. King was on his way to Washington to present a bill to America on the 40 acres and the mules and the land that we needed to end our poverty. You don't end our poverty by begging the white man for a job. He can't produce enough jobs for millions of his unemployed and ours too. We have to do that ourselves. So the pooling of monies to buy up as much land as we can buy and then go to work building agribusiness Man, they showed a sheep the other day. He had so much wool on him, they hadn't sheared him in, I think, six years. And when they took all that wool off, it was 60 to 70 pounds. That's what you make. You take the wool, turn it into cloth. Now you can build clothing. Take the cotton that we picked for the white man. He, we bailed it, he took it, turned it the cotton into lint, turned the lint into cloth. And then the Jewish brother in the north became the needle maker that made the shirts, the pillowcases, the, the pajamas. And that all businesses grew from the earth. Then came the industrial revolution. We the father of it all, baby. And if we did it for them, now we just gotta do it one more time for ourselves. That's where the real wealth is. It's in unifying our dollars. And that's what's wrong. See, you got multimillionaire basketball players, multimillionaire football players, artists. But what do we do with the money? Our managers are ma mainly white and many of them Jewish. They'll tell you, well, you got to put back into the community. They're right, but how? So we put back, we build a little uh, something in the community where the children can go and play ball. That ain't threatening white supremacy, but you did give back. Mm -hmm. But to take 10 men in the league that have millions of dollars, how much land can we buy to create business? We are dying from the food that we're eating. When I was coming along, Eric, there was no such thing as fast food. They had uh, Howard Johnson and White Castle. I mean, we didn't like White Castle. Uh, no one uh, <laughs> but then came Mickey D. And now Mickey D feeding everybody, but it ain't the best. Then there's Wendy's, then there's this, then there's that. So who cooks anymore? Grandma used to cook, cause grandma used to shop. Where did you shop, grandma? You knew what you were picking up, and grandma used to grow something in the backyard. Mm -hmm. But what are we doing, man? And we allowing the enemy to feed us, so we're sick of every disease and every cancer black women and men lead in every ailment. And when I was young, cancer was a white folks disease. Now we are the disease. They say our women are the number one carriers of the HIV virus. How did you get it? How did our women get that virus? Take a young man, bring him to prison. You examine him coming in, he ain't got no problem. But when you make him your bitch, excuse that expression, and they begin uh, sodomizing him. And some of them got the virus, they put it right in the young man. He gets out of prison, where's he going? He's going to his girl, he misses her, she misses him. They have sex and now he's transmitting all the crap that they put in him while he was in prison. Brother, we are living in the valley of the shadow of death and we've got to come out of it 
because there is life in the knowledge that Elijah Muhammad has for us. I know I've been here an, an hour. I saw, I saw the shadow <laughs> of my brother coming to let me know it's time. Yes. it is time. Well, we my, thank you. Eric, thank you very Eric, very my sir. brother, let me tell you how much I appreciate you. And I pray that God will bless you and grant you knowledge, wisdom, understanding, so you keep on feeding the young. They are the answer to our prayers. Thank you. My dear sister, is it Tahira? Yes, Tahira. Ah. May I bless you, my sister. Thank you for the way you presented your beautiful self today. You are the example that our young people need to follow. If we put examples like you in front of our children, they'll see their mother's gen uh, dressing room. How did my mama look before she came into slavery? She was covered. Go look at the pictures of Jesus in the movies, look at the women around Jesus. They all were covered. They all were beautiful. They didn't show the beauty of their form. They showed the beauty of their spirit and their mind. Thank you so much. Thank you. May Allah bless you all. We thank all our viewers. Signing out, Eric Hennigan, AKA E Money, Sister Tahira, and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hip Hop's is 1987.com. Last season, you were in a very, very interesting but privileged position. You got to play with four out of, this, let's say, the top 10 NBA players in the world right. Kyrie, LeBron, Westbrook, and KD. Mm -hmm. What's it like? What was it like playing with all four of them in one season? Like, what are some things you pick up? Break it down for us. I mean, you know, especially with LeBron, I mean, just coming in there, see how he work every day. You know, the first one in the gym, uh, how he take care of his body. I was, that's why I was actually being around. You know, you know, we go out to eat, things like that.